Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, Warriors. This is Mr. Nava again with another video. This one is for base beginners. Okay, first video that you guys are going to get. In this video, I wanted to go over, uh, again, how to read your music, how to hold your bow, how to hold the instrument, uh, the correct way to play, and some exercises that you could do at home. Since you guys all have basses at home now, uh, we should really start working on this just to get our sound better and to get your reading ability better as well. First thing that I want to show you is the open strings, okay? Uh, if you took the bass fingering chart that I gave you um, on the last couple of days, I think, well, I think it was the last day of school, then uh, you have this mapped out for you on that piece of paper. Uh, it, has, it has bass written up here, and then it has the open strings blocked off, like this, squared off, and it says open strings over here. That's because these positions on the staff are your open strings, okay? Your lowest string is what letter? E. So this one will be E because it's the lowest one on the staff. It's the lowest one, furthest one down. Then the next one would be A. Next one would be D. And the highest string that you have is G. Okay, so I really want you to try and memorize where these positions are for your open strings. If you memorize where your open strings are, the rest of the notes that we put down, fingers and all that, it's gonna be a lot easier because you already know only four of them. So, but that's gonna be the basis of where, how you understand your music, okay? Now, uh, one thing that I wanna show you is an exercise that I want you to do. First of all, if you're at home, I want you to have your bass out and get your bow, okay? Um, first thing I wanna show you is that I'm noticing some people in orchestra still aren't holding their bows correctly. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your left hand and hold the bow by the stick right there. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did in class, all right? I want you to take your hand, put it up, like you're saying, like, excuse me, I have something to say. Okay, hands up, and then just let your wrist go limp, all right? That's going to put your hand in exactly the right position. The thumb goes behind in the frog right here. Then your other four fingers come down. Your pointer finger can separate a little bit and curve because you're going to use that to put weight down on the bow and get a louder sound. Okay, but I don't I don't want people grasping it like this because I see some people doing this. And when you do it like that, let me show you with the instrument. Your sound on the instrument is actually quite harsh. It sounds kind of like. <gasps> It's going like, ow, ow, ow. it's because you're not applying a steady pressure, all right? So I want you to make sure that you're holding your bow correctly. And then what I want you to do is I want you to start on the E string, okay? Just for, just for uh, uh, an example, okay? I want you to start at the frog, that's this part, on the bow hairs, and pull this, the bow all the way across. And once it gets to the tip of the bow, I want you to go the other way. Okay? And I want you to look at your bow when you're doing this so that you know how long your bow is, how, how long it feels to play until you get to the tip. Because what a lot of people do who don't do this exercise in the beginning, they keep on doing this and then run out of bow. They're like, oh crap, I have to put it back on. Ugh. And, and they, <laughs> they have a hard time doing that. So you got to make sure that you know how long your bow is. Okay, Tip, go back the other way. Okay. Also, what I tend to see some people do is, uh, well, let's go to the A string first, okay? Playing the A string, starting at the frog again. I know you can't really see, but that's because, yeah. okay, here we go. A string, going all the way to the tip of the bow, then go back the other way, okay? It's really important that on these interior strings, these middle strings, A and D, that you make sure that your bow is level. Because what happens when you don't do that, like if you're not doing it, then start playing two strings at the same time because you bring it down this way and you're playing E again as well as A because you're like okay I'm playing A and oh no I'm playing E but I'm still playing A so that counts well no because you're supposed to only play one string at a time so when you're on the A or D string I want you to make sure that your bow is staying level I'm gonna lower this so you can actually see all right so watch A string keep the bow level okay because if you start moving it around It'll go to other strings at the same time. 
Okay, and we don't want that. We want it to sound on one string. <laughs> If you don't have your bow on one string, then it's, it, it won't sound as good. Okay, that's because I'm not I'm not keeping it on the same string. All right, but again, go to the D string this time. Go across. Make sure it's level. Get the tip and go back the other way. And then you do it for G. More out this way. Tip, go back. And you have to get used to how that feels because uh, if you're not looking at your bow, if you're looking at music, then uh, and you don't know how long your bow is or you're not comfortable with it, you're going to run out of bow all the time. Okay? Uh, another thing that I want to uh, show you, well, is actually on the staff. So let me put this down. Oops. Okay. So on your music, guys, I already explained that these are your open strings. And let's say that you wanted to play E1. What letter would that be? Let's think about the alphabet. What letter comes after E? A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? Except for bass, your E1 would be right here. And it's called F sharp. Okay? In parentheses, we'll put E1. Just so you remember what finger that is. This is all on your finger chart, but I'm just doing it right here for you. Now, the reason why this one is up here is because when music goes up by step, or note to note to note to note, not skipping anything, it goes from line to space, and then the next one would be a line. So the next note up would be here, all right? You guys actually have two on the same line. You have this one, which is uh, G or E2. And then you also have G sharp or E4, okay? And let me show you the difference between those two. Of course, we already know G1, no, it's too high, yeah, you can see it, okay? G, or excuse me, E1 would be here on the first, first finger, first tape. Then E2 would be in the middle of one and four. Okay, because remember how I said like use ping, uh, excuse me, index finger and pinky on the first two tapes. Your middle finger, your two finger, would go in the middle of that. So that's G or E two. This is G sharp or E four. Okay, they are different notes. Um, one thing that I, uh, one exercise that I kind of want you guys to do uh, to get you better at, at playing and feel more comfortable with it is I want you to do the same thing that I was telling you before. Start at the frog, go all the way to the tip of the bow, then come back. Then I want you to put a finger down and do the same thing. However, there's something that you need to make sure that you're doing. As soon as I'm done with this one, I'll show you. You need to make sure that you're putting your finger in exactly the right spot. Let me lift this up so I can show you. Okay. So, on your base, you have these finger tapes, right? Now, I'm noticing that some people are putting their fingers down just kind of like, okay, it's, 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 it's around there. Like, okay, like, would you say that my finger's on the tape? Yeah, it looks like it, right? But, let's take a look even closer, okay? If I take the bow... And I put it up against the edge of my finger because that's where the that's where the string is being played. Look where it is. Is it exactly on the tape? Nope. You need to move it back more. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is make sure that every finger that you put down, the edge of your finger, or excuse me, the finger's on top of the tape, but the edge of your finger doesn't go further than the other edge of the tape. Okay. So right there. Okay. It's lining up perfectly now. Right there on the tape. All right? Uh, but anyway, the exercise that I wanted to show you is this. We're doing the same thing. Yeah. To the tip, to the frog, finger down in the right place. To the tip, to the frog, pinky down in the right place. To the tip, to the frog. After that, you would go to A. Tip, frog, put 
the finger down. Make sure you're looking at your finger when you do this. If you're just doing it blindly, you're not going to do it right. Make sure that you're getting it uh, exactly where it needs to be. Tip and frog. Okay, and then pinky. If you want to put the twos in there too, that'd be okay. That'd be good practice. So. I'm just doing it fast for time, but I want you guys to actually do it slow and pay attention to where your fingers are going because that's really, really important, okay? Um, if you're getting uh, kind of like a high sound on your string, kind of like a... kind of like that, every once in a while, I want you to pay attention to where you're putting your bow. I'm going to lower this again so you can see it. And this is for all instruments, actually, but I'm showing you guys because you have to make sure that your bow is in the middle of the fingerboard and the bridge, okay? If it goes too close to the bridge, you get that sound, okay? If it goes too far away from, if it goes on top of the fingerboard, you still get a sound, but it's not as loud as it could be. See, we want that powerful sound, all right? Now, uh, going back to the staff on the board. <coughs> so you have open A right here. Where would A1 be? This is on a space, so A1 would be on the next line up. This letter would be B, or A1. Then you have C, or A2. Then you also have, with 4, C sharp. Okay, I need to put the note there. C sharp, or A4. Okay? Now, um, let's see. Look, you have G's down here, okay? You have G's that are E2 or E4. That's G sharp. But uh, some people got a little confused with this on the nine weeks test. Just because it's called a G doesn't mean it's on your G string. The only G that is on your G string is this one, or one that's like way up there, okay? So you have to know where these positions are in order to know, because you can have another G that's on your E string, but it sounds lower, okay? Uh, another thing right here, you have open D. What letter comes after D in the alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, right? So you have E, but this position is D1. It's not open E, okay? You can have notes that have the same name, but they will have, they'll be on different strings with different fingers, okay? Let me show you. You have E2, like I showed you. Ooh, let me pick this up again. Here we go. Here we go. We're getting it. Okay, cool. So, you have E2, that is called G. Okay, that's the E2 right in the middle of the two tapes. See that? Sounds like that. G, G. And then you also have open G. G, G. They're the same note. G. They're the same note, it's just one's higher, one's lower. So you gotta make sure that you know where your fingers are, okay? All right, back to the board. I think this is gonna be the only time I do switches. Is it still in there? Yes, it is. I'll do it down a little bit. Okay. So, um, once you get up here to this line, this of course would be F natural or D2, but you could also have F sharp or D4, okay? And then you have G. G1 would be what? What comes after G? It's not H. It's not H. Because in music, after G, we start again with A, all right? So this is A note or G1, all right? Then you have... B flat or G2 and then you also have regular B B flat, sorry B or G4 okay, and we do have more notes that go further up and up uh, you don't have any notes that go lower because you'd have to untune the E string in order for it to get lower than the E 
but uh, you do have notes that go higher and higher. But for now, we're just going to focus on the ones in first position. That's on your one, your two, and your four. You have another one and four above that, but uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. All right. Also, I know I'm drawing all whole notes here, but it's just to try and like show you where I'm putting the note. You can have half notes here. You can have quarter notes. Just color this in. Pretty big. You can have eighth notes. Okay. They just have to be in the line or the space that we're talking about. All right. But there's also another rule. Make this a half note, and I'll make this a quarter note. Okay. And you're probably thinking, Mr. Nava, why on these are you drawing the lines up, but then on these you're drawing the lines down? There's a rule for it, okay? If you have a half note, a quarter note, or an eighth note that is on the middle line of a staff or below, the stems of the note, the lines, the sticks, are going to go on the right and up, okay? It's just a general rule. But once you get past this line, if you have a note on the line, like the open D, the line, the, the stem, is still going to go up, okay? But once you go past that, the stems are going to go on the opposite side, on the left, going down. Okay? So this one, if this was a half note, the stem would be going down to the left. Okay? I'm just explaining this so you don't get confused as to why they're different. All right? That's just a rule of music. I didn't write it. I'm just explaining it. Anyway, guys. Um, oh, also, when you're standing up and playing your bass, I want to make sure that you know that you're supposed to be standing kind of like horizontal to the base, okay? Because some of you guys are like way back here and you're doing this and it, that's gonna be a little bit much, especially because it's hard to, to balance it like this. It's easier to actually like let it lay on you, but there's also a chance that it could fall over. The, what, what I want you to do is I want you to have it kind of like diagonal into your body, okay? So you have this corner of the base up against like your stomach or your, or, your, or your chest, okay? And then I want you to have your left leg out. Show you. I want you to have your left leg out like that to help hold it up. You have to continue kind of balancing it with your hand, okay? That doesn't change. So my leg is out, it's balancing a little bit, but if I let go of my hand, it's gonna fall because your leg doesn't have fingers. And if it does, cool, you're a mutant. Awesome. But uh, you have to keep your base standing up by having the hand always here, okay? But uh, that, that's how you properly hold your base, okay? Also, when you have it diagonal in your body, it'll help you see the strings better, the fingers better, and it's a lot easier to play, all right? So at home, please work on uh, holding the base correctly. Uh, bowing the bass correctly, work on uh, figuring out what your notes are called, where they are on the staff, uh, make sure that you're working on uh, songs number one, three, and four for Guess This Song Warriors, because we're going to be playing those when we come back from break, and I'm also going to be giving you a new song, so study this please, okay? Um, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave me comments in the comment section below, and I will try and answer them because I'm here to help you. And, uh, yeah, can't wait to see you guys when you get back from vacation. Uh, make sure you're practicing, and I will see you guys when you get back. Okay? Bye.